Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Ohad Marshlish, co founder and CEO of N0. Ohad, it's great to have you on the show. Great meeting you and great uh, having you on the show as well. It's my pleasure. And since this is the first time uh, I'm hosting you here on the show, and you're also co-founder of the company. So I would love to know a bit about the story of the company. Uh, also explain uh, the story of the name of the company and what do you folks do? We are all about the move for the cloud to code. If you're familiar with infrastructure as code, Terraform, Pulumi, CloudFormation, that totally changes how the cloud operates. And with this new mode of cloud, it comes the need for new type of solutions. So we empower DevOps engineers to have governance for their changes while still have maximum productivity and collaboration. Back to the name, uh, ENV, ENV, like environment, cloud environments, and Zero. we really like the company OS Zero that uh, most of you are familiar with that got acquired by Okta. So we thought it's a cool combination of having something about what we do with the digits zero. So that's why it's a, uh, we came to the name N of Zero. Excellent, uh, great name, uh, and I love the story as well. Now let's quickly talk about infrastructure as code. Talk a bit about uh, uh, about infrastructure as code in, in today modern, you know, distributed, decentralized cloud native world. Unlike a few years ago when you had monolith and a database, now cloud applications are way more distributed into small microservices of different types. So it's unscalable anymore. Uh, for DevOps engineers to continue clicking those buttons in AWS GUI or Azure or GCP, you have too many buttons and too many things to click. So instead, everybody's moving to code. The de facto standard is Terraform, but there are some alternatives. I've mentioned earlier, Pulumi as multi-cloud, open source or cloud formation as the AWS vendor only uh, framework. But whatever you choose, eventually those DevOps engineers today write code. Their code sits on GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, whereas their cloud resources sits on a, sit on a totally different system like AWS, Azure, and GCP. So how do you keep empowering those DevOps engineers to work well together, having collaboration, productivity, while still having confidence and governance to their changes? Thanks for exp explaining that. Uh... In such a way, let's also talk about the the cultural evolutions that we are seeing in the market itself. Of course, all the way from developers to DevOps. Now we are talking about platform engineering, you know. And then we look at the infrastructure code. It makes a lot of things. It simplifies a lot of things. Repeatability and all of things. It simpl simplifies for a lot of team. So talk a bit about how does infrastructure as code enable companies you know to to embrace adopt all these new technologies do not they don't slow down and they also don't make compromises with a lot of which are critical observability security and other things i think it's all about scale and empowering developers so 20 years ago developers only needed to write code and don't care about the implications of their code but then came some solutions about performance like Datadog and Eurelic. Then came some solutions about security uh, like uh, Sneak or, or Aqua security. And everything is shifting left. And so does infrastructure. The infrastructure is now in the hands of the developers. And with a very small code change, you now can do uh, something that impacts your entire infrastructure. It can be your servers, virtual machines, it can be your Kubernetes compute clusters, it can be your databases. So now engineers have even more power to influence their applications with changing their infrastructure using code. So it's more responsibility, like Spider-Man once said, with great power comes uh, a great responsibility. So now the developers are like Spider-Man, in a way, in my honest opinion. Talk a bit about uh, the adoption of, because once again, when we do talk about uh, these technologies, this cultural shift, all these paradigm shift, cultural movements, there are two things. One is that we do keep an eye on where word is heading when we start talking about things. And the second is that where the word actually is, how much of these you know, are actually in, in practice. So talk a bit about the adoption of infrastructure code 
and um, how big the market is. Yeah, sure. I think every company today uses infrastructure as code. There have been some trends in the last decade or so. It started with basic scripting, Bash or Python. Then came the configuration management solution, Chef, Puppet, Ansible. But those are not built for infrastructure. Those are more built for application. Then came Terraform, CloudFormation, and, and the others. So basically every company uh, that uses the cloud today probably doesn't do it manually and do it programmatically with some code. And now in the hands of those engineers, you can influence the infrastructure. That's the only way to really manage today's cloud in scale. No longer manual operations. Everything needs to be fully audited and managed. And actually everything is moving to code. It's not just AWS or Azure or GCP or other cloud vendors. It's also the other SaaS solutions. If you're using Okta, if you're using Datadog, good chances you're no longer clicking in a button in order to change some configuration, but maybe instead you change some code. Maybe their Terraform provider, all of those SaaS solutions today have Terraform provider in order to manage every solution, whether it's cloud or SaaS, in scale. So basically we see infrastructure as code everywhere in the market. It's increasing dramatically and the need for solutions to manage that in scale are uh, basically everywhere. Now we have laid very good foundation to talk about the company. The market is growing, adoption is growing. Let's talk uh, the role uh, M0 is playing in the market to once again to make things even more e you know, easy for developers. As I mentioned, every company is using cloud, then every company is using infrastructure as code. Let's say Terraform. So Terraform is a free open source framework, which is a great tool if you execute something in Terraform, Cloud resources will be provisioned, will be updated, maybe will be destroyed. But that's a technical solution. It's not the management solution. Think about the difference between Git and GitHub, okay? In a similar way, Git is a technical CLI, but GitHub is a solution that organizations need. So that's why a new category of solutions emerged. Maybe you've heard about HashiCorp Terraform Cloud or HashiCorp Terraform Enterprise. And NF0 competes with HashiCorp Terraform Cloud, Terraform Enterprise, whereas NF0 is not just for Terraform. We took the approach of multi-framework because we see that customers like multi-cloud a few years ago, that customers decided to choose different technologies for different needs. So we see the same with multi-framework and customers have Terraform, Terragram, CloudFormation, Pulumi, and others, and we manage that in scale. But even if you're just Terraform, and again, M0 provides the governance, the confidence, while still having productivity, self-service for your developers. Since we're talking about how it's helping, how M0 is helping, can you talk about uh, quickly, uh, like kind of summarize, get a lot, the, the service that offerings you have uh, for, for the customers? It starts with the basic things called GitOps. So again, your code sits in Git, but it basically represents operations in the cloud that you want to happen. So GitOps means when you change a code, when you merge it to the main branch, you want to execute that code and prevent drift. Drift is another basic problem that a lot of organizations today face. You have code, but you have cloud resources and somebody changes cloud resources manually without changing the code. Okay, so that's like a very basic value that M0 provides, allowing you to manage code and cloud resources together. GitOps, avoiding, avoiding drift, shifting left, and for example, showing you all the data right in your pull request, even before you merge, to understand what are the implications if I am to merge that code, how much it's gonna cost? Cloud costs becomes even more important today with the market trending and trying to save every, every dollar. So maybe your engineers are about to change some code that looks nice, makes sense, but about to cost a lot of money for your organization. You want to catch those things very early before they enter the cloud and even before 
they enter the, ma the main branch code, the main code branch. So those are like the basic things that M0 allows you when you manage cloud with code. Can you talk about the evolution of M0 solutions? Any updates, new features, functionalities? So if we look at M0 two years ago, we did the, the basic things that I've I mentioned. But as we evolve, we add more and more layers to our engine and granularity to our mechanism. So the basic thing, for example, is role-based access. How do you manage role-based access of executing code, not changing code? That concept doesn't exist in, in GitHub or GitLab. So M0, two years ago, allowed you to be in those basic role-based access layers. Can you execute the code? Or maybe you can just initiate what's called a plan. Now, for example, in M0, you have dozens of different custom permissions that you can basically assign to developers what exactly they can do with that code, what exactly can be executed, how exactly a code execution is being approved. So those layers of sophistications, of granularity, of workflows, dependencies, basically allow you to manage cloud with code your way and not building an in-house solution in order to do that. I remember 15 years ago, I had to build my own GitHub because there was no such thing as, as GitHub. It was based on another framework, SVN. Then it makes sense to build an, an in-house solution to do some uh, collaboration and management capabilities for your code. Now it's clear that for code changes, you need something like GitHub. So we're seeing the same for infrastructure co as code. Maybe you have an in-house solution, but with those granularity, the sophisticated engine, basically you just set N of zero or competition, by the way, not necessarily N of zero. You set that new solution and then allow your DevOps engineers to run fast, develop fast with minimum risk while having governance, visibility, predictability for your cloud deployments. Can you also talk about when we look at infrastructure as code because the focus goes back to developer. We talk about developer experience a lot of these days. What are some of the pain points that you say that developers are still picking? Because you know we do try to shift focus a lot on uh, DevOps, DevSecOps, but that is not a different team. It's like you are asking developers to do those things. That Those things start falling in developer's pipeline. So talk a bit about some of the pain points that you see and how you are trying to make it easier for them. Yeah, so we mainly see the pain points for DevOps engineers that today have tons of responsibility with dangerous code. They don't really understand the implications of that code execution. It's super, super dangerous, super powerful, but also super dangerous. In a click of a button or in some code execution, you can destroy a lot of cloud resources you can provision or update the wrong things, causing downtime. You can provision maybe too many or too expensive resources. You can provision resources in an unsecure way, changing your firewall very easily. Two decades ago, changing networking, uh, you had to actually move some cables, so you had more attention to what you're doing. Now it's part of the code changes, and it feels okay to do those things easily, but it's super dangerous when it comes to infrastructure, especially for obviously your your uh, your production environments. And what we feel is that those DevOps engineers really lack the confidence in making changes. They are very worried that their changes are gonna cause um, actual risks, actual uh, bad results. So that's why they dramatically slow down and do manual approvals and reviews on infrastructure changes, and you cannot have the DevOps team to slow down. The entire business depends on that very often bottleneck. So that's the problem. DevOps engineers want to help their organizations, but on the other hand, they have important tasks that are very risky, and that's changing the infrastructure. So M0 allows them to collaborate with all of the teams efficiently, 
while having confidence. That's the main pain when it comes to managing cloud with code. It's the confidence is missing. Let's talk about the, the big news, which is uh, Series A round. Talk a bit about uh, the Series A round. What are your plans? Uh, what are the areas where you'll be investing uh, these resources into? Yeah, so thanks to our great success. We have amazing uh, customers. Uh, I can mention PayPal, MongoDB, Virgin Media, Western Union, and, and, and many others. Uh, thanks to this success, we also grow as as a company and we started our Series A a year and a half ago. Uh, Microsoft led the Series A with $17 million. And today I'm happy to announce that we extend that Series A to $35 million. So we've raised additional $18 million, especially in today's market. That's a great achievement for our company. We have amazing, amazing additional investors who led this uh, Series A extension. I'm talking about Ben Nye and his new VC named The Venture Guides. Ben is uh, and his team are ex-Bain Capital. And Ben was up until recently the CEO of Tubonomic that got acquired by IBM for $2 billion. So Ben has vast experience in building infrastructure companies. And today with the new money and the new support we get from our investors, we are ready to take M0 to the next step amplify our brand awareness, our brand credibility, improve our product, and just help DevOps engineers managing infrastructure as code with confidence. Ohad, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, talk about the company. And of course, congratulations on uh, Series A funding line and also your achievement. You know, you almost doubled, I think, if I'm not bad at maths. Uh, so once again, uh, it was great talking to you and I would love to have you back on the show whenever you have something, you know. I'm pretty sure there'll be so many announcements coming out from the company, but I really enjoyed the show and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Swap. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking to you today.